Welcome to We Are DB. I am Brenton, joined as always by Danny L. That's me. And this month's bonus episode is a continuation of last month's, where we were looking at the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we're up to phase two. I'd be surprised if you listen to this and you haven't listened to the first one. I'd highly recommend you go listen to part one of this, uh, where we look at phase one and break down what we're actually doing here. So let's get right into it. Um, phase two started off with Iron Man 3 in 2013, straight after the Avengers. Um, what did you think of this? We spoke about this last episode, how it feels differently to the first two. Uh, I think mm. it's because it had a different director. It didn't go for that ACDC soundtrack. I think this one sort of gets a bad rap. What do you think? I could see that. I mean, it was just different. It wasn't classic Iron Man. It was Tony Stark. Well, they said that they wanted to do that. They wanted to go for a more of a human level as to how he's dealing with his uh, anxiety. Mm, um, which I think they did very well. Yeah, I think the depiction of it was very good. Um, I've how actually good panic seen, attacks and stuff. I've actually seen videos about the depictions of mental health and mental illness in film and a psychologist actually said this was a very accurate representation of what anxiety and panic disorders look like so well yeah it's got that going for it um Mm. but i remember particularly towards the end in the final battle scene when we watched it you said what the hell was that like i don't think you liked it at the time Mm. what'd you write down oh yeah at the very end okay i'm just looking at Oh, yeah, because this one finishes with him blowing up every one of his suits because he it was his coping mechanism, basically. He just tinkered and tinkered with these suits, and he made mm-hmm. a bunch of them. Uh, and then he got surgery to get rid of the thing in his heart, and his house was destroyed. So the and end of this threw... very much made me think, like, what's next? What the hell do you think you're yeah. going to do next? Like, he goes out of his way in the last, what, Avengers movie? The there? one before this was Avengers, yes. Um, when did he make the new element? Uh, Iron Man 2. Okay. Goes out of his way to do this, and then in this one, which is not long after, he takes it out, looks at it, and throws it in the ocean. Do you know how much fucking work that was? Why didn't you just get the surgery in the first place, if that was the solution? Yeah. He was. Like, he was had to create a new element because he was being poisoned by the one that was in there. Just get the surgery, because it looked like it was like, oh, you know, just get a surgery, boom, done. Yeah, and then he he still wears the what's it what's it called? I don't know even know what it's called these days because the arc reactor. Yeah, he still wears I don't know the if it still is an arc reactor. Arc reactor. Anyway, to would power he not have a suits. hole in his chest? Not anymore. I don't okay, know. I I don't know either. Okay. This led to more questions, and I don't think any of them were really addressed. Um, yeah. The next time you sort of see him he's sort of living in the stark tower instead of his house okay so that's addressed his suits are kind of just ignored the next time you see him he has a new suit he has the hulk buster the next time you see him he's got a bunch more suits so that wasn't really it just ignored the fact that he got rid of all his last ones and he's continued to have the art character in his chest so they also just ignored that I don't know why they chose to act like Iron Man was never coming back because there was no chance of that happening. Yeah, like, and they really wrote it that way. Like, at the end, he's, like, he's just done with it. Yeah. And, yeah, it was, it was <clears throat> weird. Um, I, I liked that they were going for a different angle. Um, the dynamic with the kid was a bit different. Mm. Um, I didn't really like this one. Yeah, the Mandarin, I believe, is meant to be a really big villain to Tony Stark and Iron Man in the comics, and they make him a joke in this. Um, Yeah. I forget his name. Ben Kingsley's character. Mm. He's an actor. He's not real. Um, And I don't really like that as someone who's not really a big fan of Iron Man in the comic books. I can see how that's annoying. (laughs) Yeah, and like... the. They made it, like, they let it up to be, like, it was going to be this really badass thing. Mm. And then it just wasn't. It was, this one was, yeah, I'm remembering more and more because it's been a while. Because we're talking Um, about it, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, there wasn't a really clear story arc and there wasn't, um, like, sometimes, sometimes with a good twist, 
you you know afterwards you're like oh that makes sense i'm like that didn't make sense you know yeah i think they were going for a different approach on this one and it sort of didn't land great and i don't really like how the main villains the bad guys they're all like got these x-men superpowers I like it when the story is grounded and down to earth and their mm. motivations are very relatable. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it gets a bad rap. It's not as bad as some people say, but it's not my favorite. I like Iron Man 2 more than this. Yeah. I feel like starting this conversation, I'm like, it was okay. And then I'm remembering it and I'm like, oh. Yep. N- n- it it's a fine. shame. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's Iron Man 3. And then we've got Thor 2, The Dark World. Now, this one is very well known to be on a lot of people's lists as the worst one, mostly because it's just CGI creatures in different space, um, different settings. The story's a bit all over the place, so a lot of people don't like this. What did you think of this? Is this the one where the Great Hall gets destroyed with the big Balrog thing? Yeah. Okay. Sorry to. Switch, I had to like, really think blend about universes, that. Universes, but yeah. Um, because there's a part at the end of this where there's a big fight scene in Greenwich, London, and they destroy Greenwich. a bunch. Of Greenwich, whatever it is. Yeah. Is Greenwich the time zones? That's all. It's English, and they s- spell stuff differently. So than it's they say it. spelt Greenwich, but Greenwich. It's- Pronounce right, Greenwich. so I'm not I'm not entirely wrong in saying yeah. that. <laughs> okay, uh, and then there's a lot of a big story thread with the ether, the second Infinity Stone that right. we're introduced to, the red one, which yes. is the reality stone. It's not actually depicted as a stone. It's depicted as like this gooey, gassy shit. I don't really know that takes this people is the over. One where... Oh, okay, it's got dark now... elves. Yeah, I it's remember. It's all about more dark elves. Now. Yeah. The the notes I wrote for this were really, really vague. What did you write? I'm like, what? Uh, I can't get a read on Loki, the snaky little bitch. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's Loki. Even in the comic books and in lore, he's meant to be a trickster. And I said I liked that this one was more fantastical in that it was based more... Um, on Asgard and within the Nine Realms. Yeah, I, it was very I fantastic. I really, yeah, I really didn't like the first Thor. I, yeah, and we talked about that in the last episode. Um, I like this one better. I don't remember a ton about it, to be perfectly this, honest with you. Yeah, I'll agree with that. There was the portal that was in London with Natalie Portman's character, and she was throwing her keys through and stuff, and yep. it was like an interdimensional thing. I still don't really remember what that means. This is the third time I've seen it, and I think I like it better than the first time I saw it, but it's still not high on my list. It's probably equal with me with the first Thor. I don't really like either of them. I think I guess what you could say, based on this conversation, it wasn't super memorable. Yeah. Evidently. Um, it was it was fine. I remember the first time I ever actually saw any of this was on an airplane on someone else's screen. And, so and you I was were like, like what the I- fuck was that? Yeah. Just like, I remember the opening sequence and it's just all this colorful shit. Mm. Um, that said, I, I still appreciated that we got to see more of Asgard in this one. Just because... Yeah. I, I didn't appreciate the irony of these, like, decked out Viking people in the middle of New Mexico. Yeah. Just, it's, just one, bit, yeah. it's just a bit, it's just a bit much. Um, you know what this kind of reminds me of? Is the Hobbit trilogy. They're focusing does? on things that you don't really want to be focused on. There's a lot of CG. They've stretched it out too long. It's not really memorable. That's what it kind of reminds me of. I think the biggest thing to take away from Thor The Dark World is the establishment of the second stone, because that's the yes. biggest thread that's going to be um, taken from here. Uh, oh, also, there's a part where Natalie Portman's character goes to Asgard. Yes. And she gets dressed as, like, all Viking-ish and stuff. Yeah, and she helps oh, Freya. She, and, what did she yeah. have? She had the ether inside of her? Yep. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm just starting to come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I've seen this three times and it's not very memorable, so. Yeah. That was Thor the Dark World. And I remember I said I like the Dark Elves costuming, but I don't at all remember what it looked like. 
is oh this is the one with the um Dr. Skarsgård is running around Stonehenge with the big antenna oh, all naked yeah. and stuff because he went crazy after the events of the Avengers because he had Loki inside of his head. Yeah. And then by the end of it, he's like, oh, I'm good now. Yeah, no, that yeah. was some good comic relief in this yeah. for sure. Uh, up next, we have Captain America, The Winter Soldier. This is the ca- second Captain America movies. I um, loved this movie. You loved this movie? Yes. What did you have to movie. say? Um, just, okay, I don't have it written here, but I'm what I'm remembering, like, the whole arc with the Winter Soldier, Bucky, it was just, I didn't see it coming, it was so well played out, and you don't figure out who he is really for a little while, because he looks very different, so that was mm. just, that was a really cool reveal for me, um... And then you have the, you know, the struggle with him trying to remember and the brainwashing. This was just, I really, I was, I was so surprised at how much I actually liked the Captain America movies. They're very good movies. I really liked the three Captain America movies as well. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people had problems with them introducing Bucky's character 70 years after he's meant to have died. Uh, people have said that, like, there's no way that... The doctor who did tests on them. There's no way that he, they fished him, his body, out from that big valley that's in the snow. Remember when he fell off the train? That was the last time the you ever saw chasm. Bucky. chasm. Yeah. Yeah, the big chasm thing near the train. Yeah. Um, and so my there's no response, way he was alive. There's no way that they went down there to fish out this one guy and then do experiments on him and make him the Winter Soldier for the next 70 years. But my response to that is they were doing testing on him before. That's why he survived. He crawled out of there himself. No one yeah. went fishing for him. He has essentially Captain America powers because that's what they did to him. Yeah, when you, he was like when they got him out of the prisoner of war camp. Yeah. So like, I've heard Steve a lot of people Rogers make that go, claim. Like, and I'm Steve like, you Rogers don't actually had to understand go like what unbuckle happened. him from a table. Essentially, when he got yeah. There. They yeah. were doing testing on him. That's they did it pretty much on his whole crew. So I can see where that's fixed if people think that there's a problem there. I don't think that they're understanding what really happened in the first one. Yeah. I loved The Winter Soldier for looking into and exploring how Steve Rogers is adapting with 21st Century. Because Mm. you don't see that at all in the first one. He wakes up um, and realizes that, holy shit, uh, it's like 2011 or whatever. And then in Avengers, it's not really touched on. They kind of just ignore it. I don't know how he's adapting to, like seeing a, a flying aircraft carrier. I think in at that point, he's just like, okay. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, just, <laughs> you know? it's just future space shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the first time you actually get to see how is he like learning about things and interacting with things. How he's is he living? He's got the pop culture list at the beginning. He's got that pop culture list, yeah. which is actually different depending on which region the movie was released in. Which is a different one for England and Australia and, and the US. Um, so if you've seen this in different regions, different things on the list will be there. Um, you sort of look into, like, how is he living? How is his relationships, both with, like, Black Widow and that sexy bitch that lived next door? Mm. It's interesting to see how, like, what is he doing in his day-to-day job? Um, I like those elements, and there's a fair few of them in here. And this is the first time you get to introduce with the Falcon, which is a big sidekick of his from the comic books. Yeah. I liked the way they I quite like approached that character, actually. That. There was a lot of cool tech in this movie. Yeah. Between the helicarriers and the Falcon suits. And I think they revamped his gear and his uniform. Yeah, he had a new one. uniform. That didn't look as dorky. Um, that being said, I think by the end he went back to the museum and stole his old one. Mm. Yeah. Um there, I just I really like this movie and I liked the story arc though I was thinking last night how many people in this universe are trying to like take over the world and the universe. Lots of different people. Yeah. yeah. Superheroes. Yeah, man. Oh, this one threw in a great big wrench into the works by saying that oh, shield that you've known for all these movies 
is actually Hydra. Hydra. That was a big, and that that for me was a bit mind fucky because there's certain people who are supposed to be like you've been sold that they were good guys, and all of a sudden they're like, "Hail Hydra!" Yeah. Um, I thought it was a nice touch that the asshole uh, senator from Iron Man Two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that. So this um, gave me a very similar feeling to the end of Iron Man 3 in the sense of like, oh shit, this th- changes quite a lot. How are they going to continue with this? Mm. Um, yeah, and I, it's interesting to see how they dealt with that. This one has Nick Fury pretend to die, I guess. He, then he comes mm-hmm. back to life and then he says, I'm out, you know, and then by the end of it he's sort of walking off and he's like, I'm not Nick Fury anymore, don't address me. I'll see you when I need you sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So that also raises a lot of questions as to like, ooh, what? I don't know how you're going to go on with this. I think he just went rogue, didn't he? Nick Fury? Yeah. Sort of, just because like everything that he knew and loved is not what he thought it was. But I, yeah, but I don't think he like quit being the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like he still believed in S.H.I.E.L.D. as S.H.I.E.L.D., and he as what it was yeah okay yeah and he went rogue so he instead of being the director of the known entity that is shield he basically did the whole star wars rebellion thing right you know? that's pretty much it i really like this movie a I lot really of people cons- it. It really good. consider this like a 1970s mystery sort of thriller like oh, where where are they going to go next sort of thing because there is a fair bit of like working out who's who's good and who's bad, um, mm. and then they have to go back to where Captain America was actually trained in New Jersey, and they find the computer. That um, was weird. That was a little bit of a weird thing, and, and I think just they're like, just putting that in there because of the comic books. Yeah, and then it gets blown up anyway. So I'm like, what's his face is downloaded in there? And he's just been sitting there for years. Yeah, and then he's there for this one scene. What do you call that? A MacGuffin, and then he gets blown up. You know? Yeah. I'm like, meh. Yeah. There was a really cool uh, action sequence in the elevator shaft, though, where he just goes in, and he can see everyone getting on and on, and <laughs> that he's was like, cool. does anyone want to get off any- before we can do this or whatever? And then he just kicks ass and busts out through the window. There's some pretty cool action in this one. I really like Captain America as a character. Yeah. Very well-rounded, very well thought out. Very well written. So the next Guardians movie on the, of the list Galaxy. is Guardians of the Galaxy. This one completely stands alone. It doesn't have anything to do with the MCU yet. There's no other reoccurring characters that sort of show up. They have mentions to the scrolls and things. I th- I think I think there's even and a lot Kree. to do with Thanos. That's pretty much there's the only thing. There's a lot to do with Thanos. Um, what did you think of this? It's so fun. It is fun. It is it's fun. got the best soundtrack, and it's kind of just fucking good soundtrack, silly. don't they? All of them do. And it's got a different attitude. Like, there's a lot of swearing and crude humor. Like, this is fun superhero movie for grownups, is what it is. Mm. It's colorful um, but dark. It's serious, but hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, yeah. I really, I really liked it. You um, generally like stories like this. You love Star Wars. You like Star Trek. That's well, kind of what and, it feels like. And that's the thing is that, like, I do appreciate when it's like, we are in deep space and this is all aliens and, like, there's Nothing's no kind limits. of mixing and ironic stuff where people have to learn about anything. Like, it's like, everybody knows what's going on. You're just you're just inserting yourself into this. Come along for the ride. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um... Did you have anything else to say, though? Oh, yeah, we had a lot to say for the others. And it's like, Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, it's fun. It's cool. Go watch it. I it. just put... <laughs> so, Peter Quill is Terran. He's human. He's from Earth. Terran, Evidently, what is that? He's from Earth. That's what they refer... That's what other planets refer to um, human people as. So, depending from where you are, it's either Terran or Earth or C-53? Yeah. Right, okay. They refer to as Terran. Um, evidently, there's a few humans getting around in space. How does yeah. Earth not know about that? You know, yeah, like the, your average civilian. 
Like, there's a universal galactic currency. I guess they know now, after the events of the Avengers, that there's aliens everywhere. Yeah, but I'm just like, everybody else is known forever, and there's like, like, is Nova Prime in this? Yes. Yeah, so there's even, like, that's all, like, it. what does that compare to? They're like a, a galactic defense force. So everybody knows everybody, and there's unions and everything, and Earth's it just, It kind of like, looks like what the, um, oh, fuck, I forget what they're called. The people from Star Trek, well, who are they? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, the, um, the unity that is the people for Star Trek. I forget what they're called. Oh, my God. I don't know either. It's kind of like a branch of the military, but for Earth. Not Starfleet. Maybe it's Starfleet, yeah. Anyway, my point is, everybody else is out here, like, forming alliances, interplanetary alliances, and here's Earth sitting with our thumb up our butt, like, not knowing what's going on. Yeah. What the heck? It really puts your everyday sort of problems into perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If only we knew. That was a fun movie. Um, It had some cool stuff in it that gets explored and explained in cool ways in the next one. Um, And this is the introduction to the next Infinity Stone, which is the purple one. Yeah, so, so far, what have we seen? Which is very vague in saying it's just, it's power. It's the power stone. Even though they're all very powerful. I don't know what that means. It's very vague. So, so far, we've seen the Tesseract. So, the, the blue one, which is... Which I don't think anyone actually knows is a stone yet, but that's the space stone. The space stone, we've seen the reality stone, and we've seen the power stone. Yes. So we have yet to have been introduced to the mind stone, the time stone, and the soul stone. Yes. Yes. I'm just imagining... So we went for Christmas at Brenton's aunt's house, and we were talking about uh star wars and she was like "Ugh, kill me now so i'm just imagining if she was listening to this i could just see her like rolling her eyes so hard we didn't even go that deep it was just like hey has anyone seen the new star wars yeah okay it was cool yeah that was pretty much it like we didn't even break yeah, it down yeah and she's like anything. oh my god puke you lost me it's uh... yeah <laughs> uh this is the also the introduction introduction of zoe saldana into the mcu and i think that that's just interesting because she's playing this alien chick flying around in space and that's basically what she does in star trek and avatar Mm. and is she in star wars because that would just like round out the entire like multi-franchise i don't think she it's just interesting that the same actress keeps coming back for these roles yeah yeah um yeah, great movie. Great. Next on the movie. list is The Avengers 2, Age of Ultron. Ultron was a very big villain in the comic books, and they call this age, meaning it's going to be lasting for a long time, and it's not. It's a one-movie tr- thread. I don't know why they called it Age of Ultron. A lot of people think that this is easily the worst one, and I, I'm, I'll agree with that. <laughs> it, it's ver- it is very, like... It has elements kind of where I standalone. really like. I I thought I thought some of the stuff they explored in this movie was really cool, and like, like the what? CG was really good too. The CG is um, always very good, yeah. But I'm with you in that, like, it just kind of seems tacked on there in in terms of the story. Like, what do you get out of this? You get vision. You get that's vision, really, yeah. That's really all you get out well, of this movie. That's a con- continuity. So, Vision is the introduction to the Mind Stone, which is the yellow yes. one. Yes. Where did that stone come from again? Loki's scepter? I... Yes. So, that means when Loki was re- wreaking havoc in the first Avengers in New York, he actually had two stones. He had the Tesseract and the scepter. Mind blown. I don't. I don't remember how that works, because... Loki. So that's because just think about that for a second. Because at the, we're gonna jump ahead a little bit, and you can cut this out if you want to. Right. At the beginning of Infinity Wars, they say Thanos is now the most powerful being in the universe because he's got two stones. Mm. Loki had two stones. Yeah, and he was basically working for Thanos. Thanos yeah. gave him an army to go down to Earth for what again to get the. Tesseract. 
Yeah. I don't really under- like. I even forget. I've seen this so many fucking times, but it's all over the place. Why didn't Thanos just grab the two stones off Loki then? Because he there's probably to go a good reason them. to this that I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that um, we both don't remember that's kind of a sign. Let's go. Okay, so this we're starting to have a lot of issues for the Avengers. So the first was the attack on New York in the Avengers, Avengers 1. Mm-hmm. Um, now we have Ultron and Sokovia. So that was a big deal and really... Sokovia is not put, a p- real place, is it? It's not a real place. It's, it's like it's Wakanda. A pretend, yeah, it's a pretend okay, yeah, go country. Um, that starts the ball rolling for a lot of things that are going to happen in... Um, upcoming movies so yes. that was kind of important um there actually are quite a few treads in this with a lot of characters that yeah it doesn't really pay off in this movie but they lead to things and the sokovia is yeah. not the only one so what i say when i said tacked on ultron seems tacked on you know that he's created he's created from from what? From the scepter? From the Mind Stone? He's like the AI that's within the Mind Stone. Yeah, and he's kind of like an advancement of Jarvis, right? Like, it was yeah, created I... between Stark and Bruce Banner Yeah. T- to try and make an actual real AI defense system over Earth. Um, And he basically goes rogue, kind of like Skynet, like we were recording yeah. this. Not long after Terminator, because they try to make it as parallels. a yeah, they try to make a defense system there as well, and they just think, you know what? In order to save the Earth, we need to get rid of this parasite that it's got. And that's exactly what Ultron did. Yeah, he's like, you don't understand, do you? You know, which a like- little bit is kind of what Thanos's overall plan is as well. In order to yeah. save life on Earth or or in the universe, you need to get rid of half of it so the rest can flourish. Yes. So that's kind of the same sort of mindset. Um, a lot of same overarching theme. And uh, and Hydra, actually, with the helicarriers. Oh, yeah, the helicarriers, yeah. Yep. Well, that was more of like a self-centered kind of motivation where they were just trying to like eliminate anyone who could possibly be a threat to them, either mm. now or in the future. Oh, we're jumping all over the place. We are, we are. Because I was going to be like, um, Easter egg, but I won't go there. No, but that one was from Winter Soldier. That was in the past. I know what you're saying. Anyways, um, they're like, we've got to make this AI. We've never managed to make this this awesome AI before. And I'm like, um, what about Hans Zola? That was the, that was the yeah. scientist. What about, he, he managed to implant his consciousness into a computer. He, he was did a it. genius what in a, a computer, yeah. yeah. What about Jarvis? Mm. You know? Like, Jarvis is probably the most comprehensive AI that's ever existed. And the thing is, Tony Stark has a lot of these. He's got files and files of them. Jarvis is just the one that he uses mostly. As soon as Jarvis dies, quote-unquote, he just puts in the next one, which is Friday. It's an Irish chick. Yeah. So, Stark has a lot of these things that you don't really get to see. I think you see more in the comic books. But they're like, we need this... Yeah, awesome AI. I'm like, you already have awesome AIs. That said, I really appreciated the depiction of the mapping of Jarvis versus Ultron. Mm. Because Jarvis is really complex, and you look at it, and then he's like, this is Jarvis. This is the stone, and it's like three times bigger with way more like neural connections. It That was a pretty cool depiction that I appreciated. Mm. I just really didn't like the final battle of this one. I found it very boring. They were going to lift up a city and drop it down to Earth as an Armageddon sort of comet that destroys all of humanity in the area, I guess. Mm. I didn't really like it. And there's a lot of just like CGI fighting with these robots. With every one of these battles, you need some sort of like expendable creature that they're kind of just destroying over and over again in order to see these... So for this one, it was uh, his robots. The elements that I did Who's like, robots? though, uh, Ultrons, which okay. were previously Starks. Okay. The elements that I did like in this, however, were um, the party scene where they're in Avengers Tower. 
Um, this is one of the first times you actually get to see the human level of the characters coming together. They're having fun. You get to see them all sort of mixing. Um, Stan Lee's there. You've got... And then you see the creepy, creepy, like, half-built Ultron that he puts himself together. Yeah, that's right, that's that right at the cool. end. Yeah. After the party. Yeah. Um, but before then, they're, they're, they're like, that, drinking and joking. You can see that they're friends, and that's kind of mm. nice to see because they've always had a conflict. You know, mm. they always will have a conflict. But this is one where they're just sort of, like, you know, joking around and having a few drinks, and they try to lift Thor's hammer. There's a really yeah. quite a funny thread there where everyone's like, it's a gimmick, you know, you can easily do it. Um, so I really quite like that scene. That's very funny. And it sort of squeaks just a little bit with Captain America and Thor, like, shits himself. He's like, oh, fuck. Oh, okay. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Uh, I thought that was really funny. And I think that's a mm. nod to, in the comic books, eventually Captain America becomes worthy and he gets to wield Monia, but Spoilers. it gets destroyed. That's in the comic books. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So um, I think that was a nod to that. Um, and I, I don't have much more to say about this that's one. Okay. There, there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff like this one was good to watch, but overall it and over well, overall it had some really important points for continuity, but it wasn't super important. Yeah, I would agree. I did like the Hulkbuster versus Hulk sort of fight in the beginning. Mm. So you've got basically a giant altered Iron Man suit versus Hulk, and Hulk is. One of the most powerful Avengers up to this point, at least. Uh, and they're just smashing up. Was it Johannesburg? Is that where they were? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, that's, I think that's a really cool fight scene. It's mm. kind of what you love out of these superhero action movies is, like, the really cool fight scene. You want you want the action. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they call it Veronica? It was launched from space. They said, launch Veronica, and this thing comes down. You remember that? The Hulkbuster. Yeah. Stark's like, okay, everyone else is incapacitated. We got to launch Veronica. So Veronica gets launched from this satellite, comes down, and tries to contain Hulk, and then the fight starts basically. Mm. Um, so Veronica is a nod to the Archie comics because in the first few Hulk movies, Hulk's love interest is Betty. Mm -hmm. So it's Betty and uh, Veronica, the only two women that funny. can really control Hulk. That's funny. I thought it was a really quite interesting yeah. Easter. Yeah. Uh, so, nothing else. <laughs> the last one in Phase 2 is Ant-Man. Now, you hated the idea of this just because you're like, it sounds so dumb for the longest time. What did you think of after you actually watched it? I thought it was so stupid. He shrinks. Oh, my God, that's his thing. He shrinks. How amazing. You were like, I don't get it. And then you watch the trailer and like, I get it a little bit more, but it's still dumb. What did you think after you actually watched it? I think immediately after I watched it, I'm like, okay, I can appreciate this more. And I can, but it was still... I it's... think I think retrospectively, Ant-Man is still not my favorite dude. Okay. I, I appreciate that like he gets faster and stronger. Because of I his quite density like Paul Rudd in this character. Yeah, he's funny. He's an in interesting choice for a superhero. Very. S th this is an origin story, and the origin stories, like I've said before, are very hard to do well. And I think this one does it fine. It's perfectly fine. It's it hits all the normal traits. It ends with like same versus same. A lot of these end battles just end up with like. The hero versus villain, but they're the exact same, equal powers. Mm. They're mostly like that. Um, I said this one had very Iron Man 2 vibes. In what way? The similar story arc, you've got this suit, and everybody wants to get their hands on the suit. And then you've yeah, got okay. a fight at the end of two guys in their suits, fighting each other. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Kinda... This one is very much like a heist movie, almost. And I think that's what they were trying to lead into, trying yeah. to go for like a jokey sort of Ocean's well, Eleven he's kind a, of vibe. he's a thief, yeah. And I kind of like that. That can, that can be fun from time to time. Mm. Um, 
I think it would have been a much better movie if Edgar Wright had actually stayed on. He's quite a funny, unique director when he takes over projects. And he started on it. He did quite a lot of work on it. And then Disney fired him because they, it, that happens all the time. You know, they don't, they're not going in the right direction. It's perfectly fine. It, it introduction to Ant-Man and the Quantum Realm, which was kind of like hard to grasp. Mm. And I think it probably could have been better. But there are elements in here that's kind of funny. And I think yep. that's what they were going for. One of the I more funny ones so far. Had kind of Deadpool esque humor. Like it was it was in terms of the humor it was going with, it was definitely closer to Guardians than it was to any of the other Yeah. Avengers movies. Yeah. Um It's kind of a yeah. weird way to end phase two. I don't know why they didn't aid it end it with Age of Ultron. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have much else to say about Ant Man, do you? No. It kind of is it what it is. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think he's a weird character. <laughs> I do. A little bit. Yeah. You can see his motivations as to why he wants to get back into this. Um, I don't know why someone with like a master's in engineering would be in this situation in the first place. He's, he's a very unique sort of character yeah. in that sense. I don't know. Well, that will end this discussion on Phase 2. There's only six movies in Phase 2. Um, so tune back in next month for our look into the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 3. We look forward to having you there.